I ask Minister Lecce to please come forward to take the oath of office. The Ford government brewed up one big cabinet shuffle Thursday, and getting the biggest promotion was a 32-year-old first-time MPP from Vaughan. So I know you've been busy. You just got named minister yesterday, so you probably haven't had a, a break. So you want to grab a coffee with me? I'm going to need one, yeah. Let's get a coffee. Stephen Lecce was brought in at a tumultuous time when it comes to relations between the province and the teachers' unions. Many speculate it was because he may better deliver the government's message. Communications, after all, is his specialty. Lecce is a former communications advisor to Prime Minister Harper. Now he finds himself as the youngest education minister in Ontario history, something he found out about Wednesday night from the Premier. When I got that call, obviously he's you, thinking... When he calls you, you know you're getting a, a, a post. You don't know what. Right? Okay, but I, you're right. I mean, that's the rational thought. Right. I am like my own worst enemy. So, I, of course, I thought it's probably just a dialogue about professional development or opportunities to learn. Meanwhile, it's... Uh, we'd like you to serve uh, uh, to be the Minister of Education. But what qualifies Lecce for the job? I think having generational voices, modern voices at the table who represent a massive cross-section of the population. Let's not forget young people are the, you know, an important demographic of our society. They are the future of our economy. We have to invest in them. And I think having young leaders who could rise to the challenge to enable their success is a positive. No less, no less. With many parents and teachers at odds with the province, the big question may be, is Lecce going to carry out the current agenda or does he plan to do something different? I spend my first day calling every single education stakeholder, every union head, every trustees association, student leaders in the province of Ontario. I did that all afternoon. Did you call the union? I called them all. You did. What did the unions have to say to you? Well, I'll let them, I'll let them speak for themselves, but I think the, the bottom line is I felt it was prudent as on day one, the tone that we're going to listen. We're going to do everything we can in good faith to move the Arctic forward for our young people. That is an important responsibility of leadership. And I'm acting. And day one, I did that. I day two, you don't know the file, but are you willing to change? Is that a willingness you have if you hear that from the parents in the union? You know, I'm quite confident that the policies that we were elected on last June to focus on STEM, to focus on more science and technology in the classroom, to strengthen teacher training, to improve our, the actual facilities of schools, which, you know, all these things are exactly what the Ministry of Education is doing, and I'm proud of the commitments we've made. The NDP's education critic said she's hopeful about Lecce. It's a very, very important and critical role, which is going to have an immediate impact, uh, potentially, on um, students as soon as September in this in this province. Um, so I, I am, I, I like I said, I, I what I hope he does is is listens and learns and reverses course. You're gear enough for a big battle with the unions. Are you, how are you going to deal with this battle? And Stephen, are you worried about a teacher strike this fall? You know what, I don't want to prejudice the negotiations. They are ongoing. Uh, I guess what I'd simply say is I'm really, uh, the reason why I made those calls to those union leaders yesterday, Richard, is because I'm trying to signal to them in good faith that I want to get to know them. I want to build a relationship of trust. And I want us to agree that our young people is uh, the single most important responsibility that we both have. It's Pride Weekend here in Toronto, and you know the Premier talked a lot in the campaign, and the previous uh, Education Minister talked a lot about the sex ed curriculum, You know whether or not to teach about transgender issues. And I know there's a new curriculum out, but I'm wondering how the current Education Minister feels about that. Look, I've made known, uh, I think it's well known, I'm an inclusive individual. I really do believe that every child in the province of Ontario, every single child, irrespective of their faith, of their heritage, of their sexual orientation, of their income, uh, of their place of birth, Every child has human dignity, Richard. Every child in this Should system... Should it be taught? Uh, well, in, it is... The transgender issue. You're okay with transgender the, issues being taught? The, we launched a large consultation, Richard. We're literally the largest in the province's history. We allowed parents and educators to have a say. You know what else we've heard from the Premier in recent months? When he talks about teachers, he says they have it pretty good. They've had it pretty cushy. They get two months off a year. This sort of rhetoric that upsets a lot of teachers who work hard even through the summer months. How, do you agree with the Premier on that, Stephen? You know what, I think teachers work hard, and I think the Premier has said it. Teachers, nurses, frontline doctors, he's always said that those in the front line of education or healthcare are making a significant difference in our country. I have respect for teachers. Many of my aunts are teachers. I'd get in a lot of trouble on my Sunday lunch if I said anything differently, but I, I respect them. With the Toronto District and Catholic Board saying that they're struggling to make up for the budget shortfall from Queen's Park, and with teacher contracts up at the end of August just before school starts, it's clear the new education minister has his plate full. Outside the legislature, Richard Southern, City News.